welcome to the friction factor introduction. We are going to talk about the friction factor and why do we need it to calculate energy loss. So I just want you to tell that we are right now interested in this little concept right here. You know all the other concepts of the mechanical energy equations. We are willing or we want to calculate the wall friction right now and in section 3 the shape friction of fittings and valves. Why do we get friction? Well, we have always a loss of friction due to the wall shear stress. So anytime you have a stress or something in contact, if you go and check the molecular level, you have attraction, interaction, crashes, collisions, and so on. The drag friction of the fluid against the wall is very critical. The, as it gets near the wall, the velocity reduces. And that's definitely a factor of energy loss. This is mechanical friction. We're not talking about any other kind of friction. And of course, this depends on the length. And hopefully you remember that friction is a trajectory concept. So if you have point A and point B, and let's say point C is far away, many times you will have more friction on C, A to C, than on A to B. So this is like the flow, as you attract, this is the wall, these are almost stationary as you can see, these are moving very slowly, these are slow, slightly slow and these are free. So in the center we always got the best or the fastest flow with less friction and in the walls we have the very low friction and so on, a very low velocity and very high friction. This is due to the let's say the imperfections. There's always imperfection which will take away energy. So let me show you what we mean with friction factor. If you actually want to know where the friction factor comes from, I will probably plan a fluid dynamics course in which we will do a huge analysis on the friction factor. Right now we just wanted to know what it is, what we need it and how to calculate it. So, what do we need it? Friction factor. How to calculate it, especially in pipes. And what uh, factors does affect the friction factor? I mean, does velocity affect the friction factor? Probably. Does the material affect the friction factor? Probably. Density, viscosity? Well, who knows? We're going to check that in next slides. Oh, but just for an overview or instance introduction, the friction loss was calculated with pressure drops. So they made this pipe and made a balance. We got point A and point B, and they used Bernoulli equation and got that they always lose energy. And they were asking themselves, why do we lose energy? This is given. Well, this is because we lose energy in the form of friction. Friction goes away, and you lose energy on the system. So if we were to do the mass balance on this pipe, we will get pressure and the friction loss. So if we, I send pressure to the left, I have pressure drop and friction right here. They define friction as a function of velocity. So this is very, very important, guys. This is the actual, let's say, formal definition. We have a friction factor. We have the length, of course also depends on the size of diameter and more importantly the velocity to the square power so given this formula let's say calculate the pressure loss we have 1000 right here uh, they give you the initial pressure they give you the length in this case I'm going to give you the friction factor number which is 0 0.02 and the diameter we are using is 1 inch Velocity is 1.2 meters per second. So, from the last equation, if we had this pipe right here, and we want to calculate the pressure drop, actually it's funny because we don't need the initial pressure, we are just calculating the pressure drop. So, I'm not going to use it. Density, we have it. Friction fac uh, factor, the friction factor, we have it right here, I gave it to you. The length of the pipe, we have it. You know that more length, more friction and more pressure drop. The diameter, we need to change that to meter. 
and velocity is given. So just solve for delta p, plug in the numbers and solve. You get delta p is about 5.6 kilopascals. I tell you before, we don't need this pressure. This pressure was extra. If they want to tell you or ask you what's the final pressure or pressure in B here, well, maybe yes, you will need it. But right now, we are just calculating the pressure drop in this line. Perfect. Now, what's the friction factor? That F value I showed you before, it's actually a factor which was calculated by some scientist, Darcy Factor made his own friction factor definition. I will be using this factor along all the course guys, so please pay attention on this one because then we're going to show another one which I do not use that much or that extensively, but it's also used in the industry and you need to be sure on which friction factor you're going to use. So we have it here, friction factor by definition is the pressure drop divided by the density times the, den the, no, the diameter divided by the length and the square of the velocity. Or if you order it, you'll get this value right here. Two times the pressure drop times the diameter divided by the density and velocity to the square power and length. There was another scientist called Fanning. This guy also invented or showed another friction factor, but this was based on another definition more on the shear stress on the wall. Uh, let me give you the definition. I will, in this course, I will show the friction factor of fanning with this little apostrophe. So two times the shear stress of the wall divided by the density and the square of the, or the, yeah, the velocity squared. We got this. We will not use this uh, factor in the course. Once again. So the formal definition, let me tell you, Moody's definition of friction factor is right here, Fanning's definition of friction factor is right here. So you can see both take into consideration pressure drop, both take into consideration the diameter and length of the pipe, and also the density of the material. Finally, they take care into consideration the velocity so why are they different? Because there are different approaches. This was the approach I showed you before on the mechanical energy equation right here. Let me show you this one right here. We got this. And this guy got into a theory on shear stress on the wall. So he calculated the stress on the wall and so on. He got the fanning factor. So the most important thing will be how do we relate Moody versus fanning factors. Let me show you here. The relationship will be essentially just divide fanning factor and Moody's factor, which we got F normal and F apostrophe here. We put this right here. You got a relationship of four. We send this one to the right here. And you got your relationship. The Moody's uh, friction factor is always smaller than the, no, it's always bigger than the Fanning's factor. So Fanning factor, for example, for example, you will have 0 0.0, I don't know, 0 0.8. That's Fanning's factor, which actually, you wanted to convert it to Moody's factor, you just need to multiply it by 4, and you get a more normal, or at least for me, friction factor, which is 32. Okay, so be sure always to know that Darcy's factor is always 4 times bigger than Fanning's factor. And actually there's a huge debate and confusion with the Fanning factor, Moody's factor and so on. If you want to check it here, Wikipedia, go and check it out. They explain you all the story behind that and they even use numbers and so on. I just explain you, it's four times the relationship. I think you don't need to know more, but if you want, there you go. So, this was an overview or introduction to the friction factor. Now that we have the friction factor and we know what it is, we need to know how to calculate it depending on the variables we will be using, which is velocity, essentially Reynolds number, and the material of the pipe, which is relative roughness. So you can always go and check out part number one, incompressible flow, 
on the Applied Fluid Dynamics course and check out solved problems, quizzes, slides and much more. Especially the quiz section right here will ask you a lot of the fanning and the Moody's friction factor. This was a free preview. If you want to get full access, go to my Incompressible Flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface. So for instance, if you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here, the pump block, and then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.